Amazon Q, Enterprise Chat Assistant, powered by Generative AI, Tutorial. Amazon Q is an AI assistant that can generate comprehensive responses to your natural language queries. It ingests your data for processing using its pre-built connectors. You can configure and control the response source. With pre-built security, the end users only see information that they have access to. Amazon Q is embedded and used in many contexts. Let's take a quick look at each of them. Amazon Q for business. Here it can be tailored to your business by connecting it to your enterprise data. Amazon Q for building on AWS. Available wherever you work with AWS like AWS console and IDE. It acts as an expert on AWS documentation, best practices and so on. Answering questions related to AWS services. Amazon Q in QuickSight. Here it enhances BI users productivity to build visuals, summarize insights, answer data questions, all using natural language. Amazon Q in Connect helps customer service agents by using real-time conversations with relevant company data to automatically recommend agent responses and actions. Amazon Q in AWS Supply Chain here it will empower supply chain professionals to ask intelligent questions, gain insights into their operations and explore alternative scenarios for informed decision making. The focus of our tutorial is Amazon Q for business. So let's begin. For our tutorial, Bytes Healthcare, a fictitious company, wants to create an AI assistant or a chatbot that can answer queries by its staff, summarize discussions, and create tickets based on its own enterprise knowledge base. In AWS console, in Amazon Q section, hit get started and then click create application button. Provide an application name. So that will be Bytes Healthcare. Okay, and then for service access, create and use a new service role and hit create. Here we are presented with a choice of retrievers and we will choose native retriever. For index provisioning, we will change the number of units to one. All right, and then hit next. And uh, here we can see various data sources and we will leave that as it is for now. We will uh, come back to them later. Now hit finish here. So our application Bytes Healthcare is ready now. Select the application and you are presented with a screen with details of the application okay where you can add a data source and uh, take a look at retriever settings web experience settings and so on so for now let's hit that add data source button and our data source will be amazon s3 so let's hit the plus icon next to it okay and uh, we will provide a data source name here so that will be Bytes Healthcare S3 DS. That's our data source name. Okay. And for IM role, we will select create a new service role. In S3, we have a bucket called Bytes Healthcare with med and AI folders. Let's go inside the med folder. And uh, here we have a couple of PDF files. Let's open them. So this first file contains information about various diseases, their diagnosis and treatment. And 
the second PDF file has a list of medicines. Okay, now let's go back to S3 and uh, go inside the AI folder and open this PDF file. This has information about artificial intelligence in healthcare. Under sync scope, add the data source location, which is a path to our S3 bucket. And then the sync mode will be new modified or deleted content. And then for sync run schedule, we will choose run on demand and then hit add data source. And let's wait for the data source to be created. So our data source is ready now. And for this data source, let's run the sync option. So we hit the sync now button and wait for the sync operation to complete. This will take some time. So let's wait for the sync status. Under sync state, you can see the crawling and indexing steps. And now the sync status is successful. From the application main page, we can hit the preview web experience button. This will allow us to test our AI assistant. Okay, so let's change the subtitle to Bytes Healthcare and hit save. And now we can prompt our AI assistant. Okay, so our prompt is What are the treatment options for gastritis? Okay. Let's wait for the response, which is the following treatment options are mentioned for gastritis in the source data. And there is a reference to the source file from where this information is coming. So this is the source file. Okay. So we can cross check this information here as well. Our next prompt is what are the medicines used in palliative care? So the response is according to your source data, the medicines used are so and so. Okay, so we can cross check this against the source PDF file referenced here. So this information is coming from here. From the application page under enhancements, hit the admin controls and guardrails link. And here we can see the global controls section. Hit the edit button next to it. And now we can add the blocked words. So our blocked word is fibrosis. Let's add that. And we can edit the message for the blocked words if we want to. And hit save. So here you can see the blocked word has been added. We will test this by hitting the preview web experience button. Okay, that opens our AI assistant, and we will use a blocked word in our prompt, which is fibrosis. What is fibrosis? So the response is cannot complete this request because the content is blocked by our admin. So that's on expected lines. From the application page under enhancements, choose plugins, hit the add plugin button. And here you see various plugins that are available. ServiceNow, Jira, Salesforce, Zendesk. We will be using the Jira plugin. Here we can provide a plugin name for service access, we will choose create and use a new service role. And under URL, provide the base URL of your Jira cloud instance, which is hosted by Atlassian. Okay, so after doing that, for authentication, you can create and add a new secret. I've already created a secret, but let's see how you would do that. Hit create and add a new secret. 
So here you can provide a secret name, Jira username, right? And an API token, right? So this API token is available in your Jira account. Now you can proceed to hit add here. Okay. So our Jira plugin has been created and its status is active. To test the plugin, hit the preview web experience button and our AI assistant shows up. Let's add a prompt. What are some palliative care medicines? And we get a list of medicines as a response. Our next prompt is create a Jira ticket to procure these medicines. Okay, and this results in a pop up to create a Jira issue where we can see the summary and description section which is already filled up. We choose our Jira project and add a reporter email and then hit the create button. So we are presented with a link to the Jira issue that has been created. So let's click that link and it takes us to the Jira page where we can see the issue that has been created with the correct subject and description. In AWS console under IM identity center, hit add user, provide a username, Joe in this case, select generate a one time password, provide an email address, confirm the email address. first name and last name and then hit next next review all the information and hit add user you can copy the one time password and the user is ready From the application page, select the web experience settings tab and uh, hit the edit button. Okay. So for a method to authorize, we will select create and use a new service role. And for configure your identity provider, we have a URL and a URI here. We will need these later, so you can copy these. In IAM Identity Center, choose Applications, Add Application and select I have an application I want to set up. For the application type, select SAML 2.0, hit Next. Okay, and hit the download button for IM Identity Center SAML metadata file. We will need that later. Okay, and then under application metadata, provide application ACS URL and application SAML audience. We copy that from Amazon Q Web Experience Setup, right? So let's copy that, paste it here. Okay, again go back to Web Experience. Copy that URI, okay, paste this here, hit submit, okay, so configuration for custom SAML 2.0 application is saved. In IAM Identity Center for a custom SAML application under actions choose edit attribute mappings, 
and provide these mappings as shown right so again subject we provide uh, dollar user email in curly braces and similarly for email attribute same thing hit save changes for a custom saml 2.0 application select assign users and groups and from users select the user we had created earlier hit assign users okay so the user has been assigned to this application in our web experience setup now we can provide metadata from our idp so import from xml file so this is the same xml file that we had downloaded earlier from our idp okay and uh, then proceed to provide email attribute of saml assertion email deploy so our application is deployed now and there is a deployed url hit the deployed url this should open a web page and we should be prompted to login okay let's provide the username joe a password and then sign in now our ai assistant should show up okay our prompt is how are gallstones treated and the response is according to your source data gallstones are typically treated with the following options and you can look at the source our next prompt is what are the ethical implications of using artificial intelligence in healthcare let's wait for the response there are several ethical implications of using ai in healthcare okay and source of this information is ai in healthcare pdf file that was our amazon q tutorial